Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and today's video is going to be an expansion on Matt, Matt Shea's recent video about a video series of his. The video series was based around a modded version of Battle Cats. The game was called Battle Dogs where somebody converted everything around and all the levels you were controlling the enemy characters not the cats and i wanted to shed some light on why ponos is probably doing this from my experience of modding and hacking games as somebody who is part of a development team for a very large project that ultimately got dmca'd and shut down as well as a couple other projects i've been a part of where the development team was actually happy. The original development team was happy to see us work on these things. So I want to try to explain more in depth about this. But first off, let's uh, give his video a play real quick. I've been watching Matt Shea's videos for many, many years. You know, one of my favorite creators on the platform. And uh, also, because of him, one of the most popular tweets I ever had on Twitter uh, that went viral was about how I make mac and cheese. If you guys want a video about how I make and eat mac and cheese, maybe we can make it the 4,000 subscriber goal video. And I'll show you guys the grossness that is my mac and cheese. Anyway, let's check out this video. Hey guys, so uh, today I have some bad news. Unfortunately, Battle Dogs is canceled. I got an email last night from Ponos letting me know that they intend to issue copyright takedowns on all Battle Dogs content on YouTube. Now, I'm not here to argue over whether or not it is or isn't copyright infringement or fair use or whatever. I just wanna let you guys know what's going on. In case you didn't know, a copyright strike is one of the worst things that can happen to a YouTuber. So right away, I meant to pause that sooner and I got, I got a text message and I grab my attention um so first of all he explains that ponos reached out to him because he's worked with the battle cats developers before on what i believe was uh sponsored content and for the game battle cats so right away i understand where ponos is coming from where they don't want somebody that they've sponsored using modded and hacked versions of their games to make content for their youtube channel Right away, that's a conflict of interest, a conflict of worry of Matt Shea has made videos on modded APKs for Battle Cats. He's made videos showing what you can do with a modded version of the game when you have billions and billions of cat food, which is the currency in the game. But so they reached out to him, told him, hey, we're going to be taking these things down. I have a theory as to why, but I'll save that for in a moment. And also, he is very correct on very correct that's terrible he's correct on saying that a dmca takedown is one of the worst things your youtube channel can get hit with the day my old channel hit 5,000 subs was the last day of that channel's existence it got taken down for false copyright uh claims um around the same time that pokemon go was really exploding i had a bot developer basically copyright claim nearly a dozen videos and from that point forward well thankfully it lost a court case against blizzard that kind of did them in um but from that point forward that's why i stopped making videos that could be misinterpreted and copyright claimed and people that are small youtubers like myself you know four thousand subs that's nothing if we get a claim there's nobody we can contact and if the claim, if we counterclaim it uh, as fair use or something like that, we have to give all this information to YouTube to prove that we are who we are. Meanwhile, the claimant just gets to say some super basic info like, I'm Universal Studios. And that's really all I see if somebody hits a claim on one of my videos. So anyway, let's continue. A single strike can prevent you from uploading and YouTube has this three strike system, which means that if Pono successfully took down my seven Battle Dogs videos, I could have my channel deleted forever, which is obviously a pretty uncomfortable position to be in because the last thing I want is to lose my ability to make entertaining content. 
One thing I'd like to add that some YouTubers don't realize, even privated videos can actually get copyright strikes by the automated YouTube system. Or at least it used to be this way. I don't know if YouTube has fixed this yet. But one of my old videos, completely privated, uh, when the whole Comet Arms Reborn project was going on, I had a video that was privated about how to make and host a server for the game. And somehow the developers that uh, make Combat Arms found that video anyway, even though it's privated, and claimed it. And I got a DMCA strike for it. So luckily it was at a time when we knew we were kind of playing with fire. So it was on a spare channel. And it was on a backup channel. So I really don't know how they found it. But the system can find privated videos. So in some cases, you're better off download the video with a YouTube downloader and then delete it from your channel, unfortunately. I mean, that's all I've really tried to do for the last 10 years is make entertaining content. And a lot of the time I do that with mod videos and I fully intend to keep making mod videos. I just won't be making videos on Battle Cats mods. I know a lot of you are gonna be disappointed and I'm sorry to those people. And to be perfectly honest with you, I am extremely disappointed as well. I know that game mods are a bit of a gray area, but I don't agree with Ponos for doing this. But at the end of the day, guys, I don't have any power here. All I can do is what's best for this channel and for everyone who enjoys it. So that means no more Battle Dogs videos. I'll just go back to the one Battle Cat series weekly. And at this point in the video, he's just explaining that he's gonna go back to his old school Battle Cat stuff. So let's look for the Battle Dogs. Oh my God. There we go. So it is actually kind of easy to find the Battle Dogs APKs. I did download it earlier. Um, I don't know what's going on with it, if it just doesn't work anymore already or what, because it's when I downloaded the APK, it was normal Battle Cats. I don't know. But Battle Dogs, in short, was just a modded version of Battle Cats to make you control the enemies instead of controlling the cats, and you fight against the cats. So everything was flip-flopped. Now, here's why I think Ponos is actually starting to go after YouTubers for this. This is my theory. They have their own game in development where you are controlling the enemies. And also Battle Dogs, Battle Cats, and it's a modded version of Battle Cats. It's a little too close to home. It's kind of touching on their IP. It's obviously modifying their game. It's a really dangerous area, and a, it, you're playing with fire if you're making something like that. So I can relate to Battle Dogs mods because of Combat Arms Reborn and because of uh, the Nitto 1320 games I have attempted to remake with friends. 1320 Legends is going very well. Zagoza is doing an amazing job and the original developers um, from CIE Games, C Games, I never knew which way to say it, they have reached out to us before and we do have direct contacts with some of the old developers and they are happy to see us working on this project. They are encouraging it. And from people I've talked to, it they make it sound like we have more access to source code of the original games than they probably do. The history of the 1320 drag racing game series is, in a long story short, so to speak, the games were fantastic. There was 555R Challenge, 1320 Challenge, 1320 Legends, and Racing Rivals. At the end of Racing Rivals, I still see fireworks. It is July 5th. I mean, they're cool, but I'll get back to the, or back to 1320. During the Racing Rivals days, CIE had to be bought out. 
They were bought out by a company called Glue Mobile. Glue Mobile then ran the game into the ground, unfortunately, as how the community all sees it. And all of you guys know me. I have a ton of Racing Rivals content. Even still, there's 33 videos touching on the Racing Rivals subject in one way or another because the game was so important to me. So there's the Clone Returns, there's Rush Racing 2. Don't waste your time. There was the source code series of how to see the Racing Rivals source code. There's a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of it is privated because I don't support it anymore or there's just no reason to have it up and available because Racing Rivals doesn't exist anymore. The game went through several different developers, um, Blue Mobile being the publisher, and that was that. Uh, unfortunately, the game shut down because it was no longer profitable, it was too, too heavily exploited, and nobody liked the direction the development companies were taking the game. So the game shut down. I have an ability to potentially run servers for that game, but that's a talk for a different day. The Nitto games, I've talked directly with Justin Choi, who was the president of CIE Games. Um, and other people in our community have talked to other original members of those games, and they are happy to see us working on these projects. Hell, a member of our community put out the $4,000 to buy the original domain. It's insane. Like, some of y'all are the most dedicated people I've ever met. I also, I personally own this domain. I also own Mopar which was a tournament during the Nitto 1320 Challenge days. And I own a bunch of other domains, like 1320 HD, 1320 Challenge. I own a whole bunch of domains for this. The, dev the devs are happy to see us working on it. They think it's really cool. They haven't gotten mad at us. But let's talk about the other side. Belofi and Combat Arms Reborn. Combat Arms Reborn was a game that I started... Well, not a game that I started. God, it's so long since I've been to the website, I forgot what it was. So, Lith Archive was a website that I started with a friend that went by the username of Morpheus. We had this idea, actually it all stemmed back to VG Vault that I started with my friend Kennard from the 1320 days. VG Vault was supposed to be a website dedicated to housing everything from downloads of old game clients, mods, the things that should be archived that are getting lost to the internet with time that we were able to find somehow, some way, through our different methods of just being so good at using Google, basically. Google or DuckDuckGo or Yandex, whatever. That evolved into Lith Archive with my friend Morpheus, which was admittedly... I don't want to say it was a better idea, but a more subject-based idea. VG Vault would have been better with a team that all had dedication to different games in different genres. You know, if there was one guy working on a part of the site that was specific for Minecraft, me and Kennard were working on 1320, somebody else working on Old School Arma, somebody else working on Call of Duty, somebody else working on Need for Speed... You get the point. It would have been better off if it was a large team of people to make a big website really quickly. VG or Lith Archive, the point was specifically Lith Tech Jupiter Enterprise stuff, which was a game engine that originally came out in 1999, uh, debuted with the video game No One Lives Forever 2. Uh, there was also Contract Jack. Combat Arms was made on Lith Tech Jupiter. Crossfire is Lith Tech Jupiter, I think. It might be Talon. Not sure. Sudden Attack was Jupiter, Talon. Um, one of the Medal of Honor games is Lith Tech. There's tons of games. The Fear games, uh, the original Fear game was Lith Tech. Alien vs. Predator 2 was Lith Tech Talon. Just a whole bunch of stuff. And there was about a five and a half to six year development time on Combat Arms Reborn. Radeon approached me one day 
asking me some modding video uh modding and like uh other things about how certain files and stuff like that worked i don't remember if it was like for patching exploits or how to make something work i don't remember not a big deal not a big part of it but from that it evolved into a really cool friendship and i feel bad that i haven't talked to the guy in so long but i haven't even seen him online on discord unfortunately if he is online and he's just in ghost mode i feel bad that i haven't reached out but busy with so many other things um Velof got mad Velofi Velof they got mad about the combat arms reborn they were banning people from their discord that would mention it there the whole point of combat arms reborn was to bring back the combat arms from July 2007 maybe 2008 2007 or 2008 when it was the initial first release of the game public for anyone to play and five and a half to six years of development time led us to a point where we were able to make a release and people were able to play the game. It lasted a week and a half and our Discord was deleted. Belofi sent out a DMCA. They were also DMCAing download links. They DMCAed over 2,000 download links through mega.co.nz. Independently did those links. Not a full account individual links that linked all back to certain members of the lith archive community but we knew we were playing with fire but we released the game in such a way that anybody could play it if they had the game client because you could just run this dedicated server.exe port forward on your router and anyone can connect to you if you wanted to play it safe you could do it through a vpn or a uh, dns redirect there were tons of ways to do it. The game was a super awesome success. That's terrible wording, too. It was an awesome success. The first week, there were... I, I think our Discord hit 1,500 members with just very little word of mouth, if not more. We were trying to get around the pay-to-win. We were going to not... We didn't have anything that you had to pay for. There were... It was so much fun. There were people making YouTube videos on it. There were people making that were streaming it. There were people that were playing it. And it was like 2010 again. I could not wait to get home from work and play Combat Arms Reborn with my friends. I could not wait. I actually hated being at work. And at some cases, I downloaded it to a flash drive and played at work. Don't let my boss know. <laughs> Did that with 1320 Challenge as well. Um, Belofi got very mad. DMCA'd the whole project. It killed pretty much most people's wanting to make the project, unfortunately. It was a big negative. But they were protecting their IP, which, from a legal standpoint, I totally understand. I feel like it could have been something better if they just reached out and talked to us. Like, you guys clearly have some skills. Let's work together and make a Combat Arms Classic that's actually fun to play. Uh, not a Combat Arms Classic that's just got the same content in it as Combat Arms Reborn and is pay to win. Um, there were a lot of things we could have done differently. And a lot of things that we could have enjoyed further to make the project last longer. We could have not called it Combat Arms. We could have called it something else. Uh, like I do with the 1320 Challenge stuff and 1320 Legends. If you ever hear me talk about it, unless I'm talking about the old school Flash game, Nitto 1320 Challenge and Nitto 1320 Legends, whenever I refer to those games, those are the old games. If I'm talking about current projects, it's 1320 Challenge and 1320 Legends. is something that I've just trained my brain to say. And the reason for that is we can't get the right to use Nitto. Nitto is a large tire company. We don't have the ability to use this. We can't use this. If we reach out to them about using the branding, maybe they'll say yes, maybe they'll say no. We don't know. But when I talk about the game specifically, I and it's the projects that are currently ongoing, I do not talk about it as Nitto 1320 whatever. I gotta sneeze. Hold on. 
I'm glad my mute button works on my mic. Anyway, I sneeze like Godzilla. Anyway, so yeah, two very different things. And that's why I think Ponos is in the position that they're in is because it's modifying a lot of their, a lot of their old stuff. Like I have 47 videos on the Nitto stuff, but a lot of it's privated as well because I just, there's no reason for me to make it public. It's going to bring up pointless questions from people finding videos that are four years outdated. So, Onos is in a position of protecting their IP, and I wouldn't be surprised if they are making a game where you are the enemy themselves, and that's why they're doing the DMCAs now, because Battle Dogs has been around for a while. So, something new is around the corner from them. Battle Cats was released a very long time ago. This game has been around for a very long time. Its initial release date was 11 years ago. Through Blue Stacks, don't use Blue Stacks. The initial release, uh, I remember, honestly, it was one of the first games I ever had on my Android device. So, Battle Cats has been around, and if they aren't making a new game of some kind that's a sequel to this game, finally after 11 years, I don't know what they're doing. So, that's some more explanation behind why I think Ponos is doing what they're doing. There is either a game in the works that is just like Battle Dogs, or they are just protecting their IP. What I can tell you is they're definitely not happy about somebody modding their game because it does take away money from them. If this person didn't mod the APK to give you a million cat food when start up Battle Dogs, it would be different. But they're definitely protecting their IP, and there's probably a new game in the works. So I just wanted to make a comment or a uh, YouTube video based around some of the subject of being someone who is a developer on some modded and hacked projects that companies enjoyed the fact that we're working on it, but they also are, but another company being the exact opposite. So I hope you guys understood some things from this video. It's a longer video, I'm sorry. But I felt like this was a better video than it was for me to just leave a comment on this video that's going to get lost in the abyss. So I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace.